when you're meditating, you're taking responsibility for yourself. In other words, you know your actions come out of your mind, and if they're going to be skillful or not skillful, it's up to you to decide. So you try to get the mind in good shape so that it can make good decisions, so that it has a good impact on you and the people around you. We have a lot of little ones here today, which reminds us that we're responsible not only for ourselves, but also for people that we have to train, people that we have to look after one way or another. So in addition to developing a lot of good, solid qualities within ourselves, we have to think about the qualities as they have an impact on others. And the Buddha recommends four qualities that you develop. There's goodwill, compassion, empathetic joy, and equanimity. Now the meditation helps you develop these so that you have goodwill for yourself and for other beings. Goodwill means basically wishing for happiness. It means wishing that you yourself will understand the causes for true happiness and will be able to act on them so you can find that true happiness, and wishing that others will be able to do that too. In other words, you're looking at them not just as recipients of your actions, but remember that they are agents as well. And so you want them to be good agents. What can you do to help these children learn how to be good agents? In other words, take responsibility for their actions. That's how you show goodwill for them. And there's compassion. If you see that they're suffering or, or causing suffering to other people, okay, you want to put a stop to that. Empathetic joy, you see they're happy. They're doing the things that would lead to happiness. So you're happy for them. You're not jealous. You're not resentful. All of these three come together, basically a wish for happiness, a wish for genuine happiness, yours and theirs. But these wishes also have to be based on discernment. We can't realize you can't make other people happy. You can help them make the choices that will lead to happiness in themselves. But you can't go around making everybody happy or be responsible for them to be happy. And there are many times that you know how much you want them to do the right thing, they're not going to do it, because after all, they have freedom of choice too. That's where you have to develop equanimity. That they're the ones making the choices, and to whatever extent you can influence them in the right direction, okay, that's when you're helping them. If you influence them in the wrong direction, so they start making unskillful choices, that's harming them. But then in a lot of cases, they're not going to listen to your influences one way or the other. They've got their own minds. Those of you who have had many children realize this. Okay, you have the same basic environment in the family, but different kids turn out differently. They pick up different messages from their parents. That's going to be beyond your control. So you have to develop equanimity for situations like that. Realize, okay, we're all independent, we're all free. And some of us use the freedom wisely, and some of us don't use it wisely. And it doesn't depend on whether they're people you love or not. Some people you love very much are going to use their freedom unwisely. So you have to be prepared for that, remembering that your true happiness can't depend on them. Your happiness has to depend on the causes that you give rise within yourself. Just as their true happiness can't depend on you, you've got to help them to whatever extent you can to make the right choices. But ultimately, they're making the choices, and those are the choices that are going to influence whether they're going to be happy or not. So I'm trying to develop equanimity, which is the hardest thing to do when you're dealing with someone that you really love. But it's necessary, otherwise it's, the love brings a lot, a lot of pain. So you have to make sure that in equanimity you're also fair. In other words, you don't give in to bias based on desire, because you like somebody, that you do you do something that's inappropriate just because you like them, you want to please them. Bias based on anger, in other words, they do something that really displeases you, so you do something that's wrong. Bias based on delusion, bias based on fear. You're afraid of somebody's power, so you end up doing the wrong thing because you're afraid of what they'll say or do if you do the right thing. If you have any of these biases, okay. You're going to be leading your life in the wrong direction. As the Buddha said, this is the wrong course. And you're also setting a bad example for others. You have to be fair, which means that sometimes the people you love do something wrong. Well, you have to teach them how not to do that in whatever way is appropriate. You have to punish them sometimes. So this is what equanimity requires. It requires that you be a real adult in looking after the people you're responsible for. I think it's not indifference, it's just basically that you have to realize that there are certain, certain limits to what you can do, and once you've reached those limits, you have to rest with that. And then turn around and look for you, cause the sources of true happiness inside. But the extent to which you can, you, you want to have goodwill for others, you want to have compassion when it's necessary, you want to have empathetic joy when it's necessary. All these qualities taken together are what it means to be a reliable senior person, in other words, someone who is in charge of others, someone who has an influence on others. Because you want that influence to be good. And not just good, you want it to be wise. 